Hello, thank you for joining. Um, I'm going to talk about Minerva and efficient risk limiting about polling audit. And this is joint work uh, uh, with Grant McLaren, uh, Sarah Morin, and Neil McBurnett, and Pur Vivora. I'm Filip Zagorski. Um, I'm going to briefly talk about risk limiting audits in general, and then I will focus my uh, your attention to Bravo, and then we'll go and talk about Minerva. Um, there are many different uh, voting technologies uh, out there. Uh, some of them are fully electronic, like VRE machines and most of the internet voting uh, solutions. Uh, there are some hybrid, uh, and uh, fortunately, most of the um, voting systems use uh, paper ballots. Um, but because uh, paper ballots uh, and the ballot design can be really uh, complicated, um, even if uh, uh, ballots are uh, cast uh, and marked by, uh, by, by hand um, of voters, um, these ballots are scanned and tallied by computers. Uh, so we are back uh, in a computer security uh, problem um, because we cannot be sure if uh, ballots are tallied uh, correctly. Uh, so certification is, of course, uh, not an answer uh, because what is important uh, is we should focus our attention on uh, evidence-based elections. So we should be uh, interested in uh, in the correctness of, of, of results. Uh, so we uh, should also ask a question uh, if a scanning or tallying machine uh, runs correctly on election night, not uh, at the time when it was certified. Um, and the counting mis mistakes uh, can have different sources. Uh, it can be um, bugs, it can be configuration errors, or uh, it can be a result of hacking. So uh, what uh, everyone should do is uh, everyone should uh, focus on uh, performing post-election tabulation audits. Um, and uh, to do it even in a slightly better way, uh, to focus on uh, risk limiting audits. So risk limiting audits are a post-tabulation audit uh, that manually check random sample um, of uh, voters' ballots. Uh, so you need to start from a reliable uh, voter verified paper trail. Um, so just after uh, election results are announced uh, and you start your audit, uh, what you do is you sample ballots at random. And then basically what you do is you check if a sample is statistically similar to the announced tally. Uh, and your audit can stop and say, yes, um, it is similar. Uh, so the uh, tally is correct. And then you stop the audit. Um, but you can say, uh, no, uh, it's incorrect. And in that case, you proceed to uh, complete hand count. Uh, or you can say, um, I don't know yet. Uh, and in this situation, you just draw uh, some more samples. So you go back to uh, step number two. Uh, risk limiting audits uh, have a very nice property. Uh, and RLA has a known chance of correcting the reported outcome if the reported outcome is wrong. So if you set a risk limit to 5%, then if outcome is wrong, then there is a 95% chance that the RLA will detect that. Um, so I will briefly uh, say about the uh, model and notation that we will use uh, here. So, uh, and we will focus our attention on two candidates. Uh, so we, we have just only two candidates and we have one declared winner. Um, but this, uh, everything what I'm gonna say is easily extended to multiple candidates or winners. Uh, so let W be a true winner, a WA announced winner, P is announced fractional tally for um, WA, so a P is uh, from one half uh, to, to one. Uh, H0 is null hypothesis, um, it is the closest possible incorrect outcome, which is uh, that th there was a tie between these two candidates, so there is no winner. Um, HA is the alternate hypothesis that uh, the election outcome is correct. Um, X is the entire sample drawn so far. XJ is entire sample drawn up to J round. Uh, and A is the statistical test. And we focus here our attention on, uh, on one uh, type one error. Uh, and this is uh, the case when uh, the test says that everything is fine uh, while uh, the underlying uh, sample comes from the uh, tight uh, distribution. Uh, 
uh, and then th this is the problem. Um, we can also uh, compare uh, different tests uh, and consider also uh, type two error and then it influences the, the efficiency, um, but we don't have time uh, for that. So uh, an audit A is risk limiting with risk limit alpha if and only if uh, probability of missing uh, the correct uh, answer is uh, less than uh, alpha. Uh, I will uh, use uh, examples uh, to explain uh, our work. Uh, so uh, for, for this presentation, we will have uh, the situation when the announced winner uh, won with 75% uh, uh, of all votes cast, and we will consider a risk limit uh, of 10%. Okay, so uh, what the risk limiting audit does, uh, it, uh, you, you sample some ballots, you can mark uh, how many uh, ballots are for the winner, and then at some point you need to say uh, if the sample comes from, uh, from H0 or uh, from uh, HA uh, um, uh, distribution. So basically you need to, you need to say uh, in which ward you are in. Um, and then there are different uh, ways of, of uh, looking at this or, or making these decisions. So uh, one way of doing it uh, is, is called Bravo. And Bravo uh, is an RLA that was uh, proposed in 2012 by uh, Mark Lindemann, uh, Philip Stark, and Vincent Yates. Um, and uh, this is uh, the sequential uh, ballot by ballot uh, sequential uh, ratio uh, test uh, um, that, that is the extension of um, uh, classic work uh, of Abraham Wald. Um, and it, what it does, it takes a sample, takes a look at uh, where we are at, uh, at, at a given point of, uh, of, of the sampling procedure. And then it compares uh, to uh, and computes a ratio of two, two probabilities. Uh, so one is the probability that, uh, that the, our observation is uh, from the uh, alternate uh, hypothesis uh, here uh, or uh, uh, H0. And then the ratio tells us uh, uh, where we are. And the decision is that the ratio should be larger than one over alpha, which is one over the, the risk limit. So in our case, when alpha is... Uh, um, point one, uh, we would need to, to wait till the situation team, uh, till we get um, this ratio over um, 10. Okay, so uh, we are not successful. So we, we are in this undetermined state and we need to uh, draw uh, some more samples. And then we uh, compute this ratio over and over again. Um, and uh, hopefully at some point of time, uh, we have enough uh, evidence uh, to confirm that the uh, results are exactly as announced. Um, how this can last longer or uh, shorter period of time. Uh, the interesting and important thing is that when the sample comes not from the announced uh, distribution, but from the tight distribution, then usually uh, 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 audit will never stop and you basically do the, 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 the full hand count uh, or it uh, when it stops, it stops only uh, with uh, less than your risk limit. Um, so uh, for, for Bravo, everything is uh, computed. So you can, uh, you can figure it out what is the expected number of ballots given a given um, uh, victory margin. Uh, you can say, okay, uh, uh, let me, if I want to finish with 90% uh, uh, cases, then given the margin of victory, I need to, to, to do uh, on average uh, that number of, uh, uh, this is the, my, my, my sample size. Um, but the problem uh, with, uh, with this approach is that, uh, in fact, audits are not done uh, ballot by ballot. Uh, because you need to go to, to, to a box, uh, then you need to uh, pull the, the, the ballot that you uh, are supposed to, to, to sample, and it takes time. So in fact, what, uh, what people do during audits is they don't perform uh, ballot by ballot, they do it uh, round by round. And then the problem is that when you do it round by round, uh, 
the numbers that you that you have from this table that you, that you saw uh, a couple of slides back uh, are uh, are not correct. Uh, so uh, you would expect that the number of uh, of steps that uh, that you need to do in order to finish your audit um, is, is smaller than actually what what is needed. So end of round uh, Bravo uh, takes a longer time uh, and it has completely different probabilities of stopping than uh, um, the original uh, Bravo. Okay, so you lose uh, expected probability of stopping and you. Uh, you need to sample much more ballots. So we came up with um, uh, Minerva and Minerva um, takes a slightly different uh, approach and it doesn't compare uh, the probabilities of being exactly at a given point, but it takes into account, uh, let's say, area uh, that we are at a given point and or above. And we also take uh, into account this ratio. So the ratio that, uh, let's say, after sampling 36 ballots, uh, and we have at least 25 for the winner. Uh, we compute this probability, and then we divide it by uh, by, uh, by the pro uh, probability uh, from from this distribution. And if uh, uh, if this ratio is above the threshold, then we then we stop the audit, and uh, and we are good. Um, this gives us uh, efficiency uh, boost. Uh, so Minerva takes uh, on average uh, much um, less ballots than end of round Bravo and uh, also fewer ballots than uh, uh, original Bravo. Um, and in fact, what we've, uh, what we've chosen, uh, what we've, what we've uh, showed was uh, the following. We've uh, presented uh, that ballot by ballot decisions in round by round procedures are inefficient. And then we showed that uh, Minerva uh, is risk limiting, uh, is at, at least as efficient as end of round Bravo or selection ordered Bravo. Uh, we also provide uh, open source uh, software. Uh, pilot RLA of primaries uh, was performed uh, in Montgomery County, Ohio in May 2020 by Mark Lindemann. Um, and Minerva is integrated uh, with uh, Voting Works. Uh, uh, that's the uh, open source uh, vote auditing software uh, from uh, Arlo. Uh, thank you very much.